And we are now joined by the authority figure on all things Miami Hurricane football. Been covering the Hurricanes for the last 40 or so years. Gary Furman of Kane Sport joining the roundtable. Gary, how we doing, man? JD, man, we're doing great. Uh, happy to be here with you today. Happy to have you on, man. Happy to talk some ball. We're less than 100 days away now. And for Miami, there's a lot to be made of what happened last year and then going into this coming season. And I just kind of want to get your opinion on the overall feel around the state of Florida because Florida State has a lot of buzz around them. I don't know if you ever expect Florida to just totally stay down and play dead. How much sense of urgency is there to win now in Coral Gables? I mean, there's always a sense of urgency to win in Coral Gables, but that has collided quite a bit with reality for many, many years now, J.D. Uh, you know, uh, Mario Cristobal left a established program at Oregon where he had already built it up and it was, you know, ready to compete for, you know, pack titles and maybe even to get into the college football playoff. He came to Miami and I'm guessing he found a bigger disaster than he thought he was going to find. I mean, I, I think he still takes the job because it's obviously the, the job that he always had dreamed of. Um, but this has been just an uh, absolutely staggering amount of work. And, you know, of course, we've been covering it every step of the way at canesport.com. And it's, it's literally team no sleep down here in Miami. We don't get days off. We don't get minutes off. There's always somebody committing. There's always something happening in the transfer portal. Um, this is a race against time to try to get this program back to a competitive level. And, you know, if you just take a look at what's happened, I guess it's now about 18 months um, since Mario got to Miami. You've probably, I, I've lost count, but it's at least 40 exits into the transfer portal and out of the program that have been replaced by signees and transfers. And um, it's a complete overhaul of the roster that we're witnessing. And I think they're just getting to the point now where they feel that this year coming up, they can be more competitive. Last year was just a total disaster. As you know, um, this year they're expecting to take the next step forward and you know maybe get to eight wins, nine wins if things go well and keep the uh, progression going to where in um, 24 and 25, you now can compete maybe to make the playoffs. And Gary, you said something about getting Miami back to where they expect to be. In, in my mind, there's sort of two facets of that, the first part being the roster, but the second part of that being the culture. And I feel like so much of that was advertised when Mario Cristobal took the job at Miami, but that obviously takes some time to get everybody on the same page from a culture standpoint. Where are they in that process in your mind right now? Well, I, I think last year it was culture shock. And I think that contributed uh, to some of the losses and some of the problems that they had on the field. The expectations of being a Miami hurricane were amped up massively last year. And, but now you've, you've had that roster purge and the guys that are in the program are accustomed to the standards that are being set. And I expect it to be significantly better uh, this year from a culture standpoint, uh, no question about it. Uh, you know, when you have so much roster pur uh, purge and guys coming, guys going, uh, one-year loaners through the portal, things like that, it, it's, it's really difficult to establish a culture when you're a new coach coming in, especially when your culture is so drastically different than what they had in the previous years, which was contributing to the program getting to the point where they had to make a coaching change in the first place. So this is not a come in, snap your fingers kind of thing um, when you're talking about a, a program that had been struggling the way Miami has. Uh, but like I said, I, I'm seeing a, a big difference this go round. I will be stunned if this football season coming up is not significantly better than last year. And a big piece of that is going to be the offensive line. And the offensive line isn't necessarily – a position group that's always going to be in the headlines. It's not super flashy, but probably one of the most integral pieces to making change this coming season is what he's done in the transfer portal and the excitement around Francis Malagoa. In your mind, what's the, the impact they could make this coming season with how they've revamped that position group? Well, I mean, look at what has been done here just in the in recent months. You bring in Matt Lee, a guy that's going to be an NFL center from, from UCF in the portal to play center. You bring in JV on Cohen, a starting level player from Alabama, 
to start at one guard position. You signed two five-star tackles in Samson Okanola and Francis Mayagoa. I'm not, I mean, Francis is going to start at right tackle. I'm not personally convinced that Samson is not going to end up as the starter at left tackle. I mean, he looks, I saw him yesterday out at the practice facility. He, he looks so good physically. And it's just a matter of him catching up to the game speed at the college level because he did play up there in Massachusetts at a little bit of a lower level of high school ball. And uh, this has been an adjustment for him. But the bottom line is, you know, you take them and you, you mix them with like a Jalen Rivers, maybe a Zion Nelson comes back. Uh, Mario Cristobal feels that he is on his way to building what he is planning to be the best offensive line to ever play at the University of Miami within the next year or two. And I can't help but feel like if they got to that win total that you were throwing out there, if they're in the eight win category, nine win category, that's going to be a much easier pitch to make to some of those top guys rather than, you know, hey, we won six games, we won five games, whatever it ends up being. But I'm excited to watch this coming season. I mean, selfishly, I feel like college football is better when the U is right up there with some of the best in the country. Well, they're working hard to get there. You know, yeah, I mean, the winning is so important in recruiting. Uh, they were able to overcome it last year. You can't expect to overcome it every single year. You have to understand, in Cristobal, you have a head coach that expects to sign every single kid he recruits. And if you're going to have a success rate, obviously nobody's signing every single kid they recruit. But if you're going to have the kind of success rate in recruiting that he is looking for with some of these five-star kids, uh, you are going to have to show that you are winning on the field, that you are developing players. And I think that is the agenda for this uh, 2023 season coming up, to, to prove that on the field. Without a doubt. Well, Gary, we appreciate you, man. Thanks for making time. Gary Freeman over at Kane Sport. Nobody better in this entire industry covering Miami. Gary, thanks again. We'll do this again real soon. Thank you, JD. Always a pleasure. Miami fans, if you liked that video, go get a membership at Kane Sport. Going to keep you in the know for all things involving the U. Also, subscribe right here to the On3 Roundtable YouTube channel.